Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today for this webinar. Uh, my name is Sylvain from uh, Telops. I'm a marketing analyst. I uh, will be acting as your host today, and I just wanted to quickly uh, get a few things out of the way before we get into uh, our, our presentation. Uh, first, uh, I want to let you know that this webinar is being recorded, and a link and the presentation and the Q&A will be sent to all attendees uh, after the webinar, probably uh, Friday or in the beginning of next week. We also encourage questions for the audience, so if you hear something during today's presentation that sparks some interest, or you would like uh, more information on application or what Ben is talking, please feel free to, to use the the, the go to webinar question box on the right on your screen and then after the presentation we will uh, we will take some time to uh, to answer some of the the question and all of the the quent the question not answer will be uh, sent uh, the the answer will be sent for all the question not answer live um all right now all the intro uh, out of the way i would like to ask a little bit about uh, the audience today using uh, a poll question so uh, i will launch a poll question so so uh, it's a little bit to know about your your knowledge on uh, thermal infrared imaging technology so if you have direct or not direct experience or you're, you have been on the field to take measurements so i will take uh, Ten again to 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 leave you the time to answer uh, this this quick poll question. Hmm. I think most of the audience already voted, so I will close it and I will share with you the uh, result to see. Oh, okay. Uh, we don't have any expert today, okay, but we have, uh, yeah, direct experience 38% and no direct experience 38% as well. So, okay, so we'll, uh, we'll, we'll adjust the uh, presentation in, uh, in, in consequence. Um, okay. Um, Finally, uh, I'm very pleased uh, to introduce you to my colleague, Ben Sauté. Ben has uh, been with Telops since 2019, first as a field application engineer and now has the uh, scientific product line manager. Ben earned a uh, PhD in analytical chemistry for the University of Rhode Island in uh, 2012. And since then, has worked a different role exploring development and application of advanced spectroscopy and imaging techniques to a wide variety of measurement challenges. In his current role with Telops, Ben is responsible for maintaining Telops' reputation of innovation by driving the development of the most advancing advanced infrared imaging system on the market today. So uh, today, Ben is going to talk about us uh, about the special resolution and uh, high special resolution and the advantage that this kind of system can bring to our measurement. Uh, so now at this point, I will turn things to, to, to Ben, to him. So Ben, can you take it away? Yes, of course. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, thank you, Sylvain. That's a great introduction. I'm very pleased to be able to speak with you today. Um, I'd like to encourage everyone to, you know, please feel free to reach out to me anytime. Uh, you can see my email address below here. Um, yeah, if you'd like to discuss today's webinar or, you know, really any other topic. <laughs> so, you know, if you sort of follow the infrared imaging industry, you're probably well aware of the technology trend towards devices with higher and higher spatial resolution capabilities. You know, of course, we all want the highest capability we can get. And we talk about things like spatial, res excuse me, spatial resolution. The understandable tendency is to kind of think, you know, more is always better. So, you know, this might be true in the overwhelming majority of cases, right? But I still think it's important to know why do we want more spatial resolution to ask the question, you know, what advantage is increased resolution going to bring to my measurement? So, you know, before we get too, too deep into the technical side of things, I want to take a few moments to introduce Telops to those who might not be familiar with our firm. Um, as you can see here, uh, we were established over 20 years ago uh, in Quebec City, and since then, we've grown to uh, over 90 employees. 
And our main offices and production facilities are located in Quebec City still, uh, but we now have employees and offices all over the world, uh, including US and Europe. Um, over the years, we've been established as a world leader in advanced scientific thermal infrared imaging products. Uh, and you know, we're very proud to continue that tradition uh, with some new high definition models uh, with really great resolution performance that we'll get into here uh, in a little bit. Uh, so just to quickly overview, uh, we have a really diverse product line that's designed to meet the needs of the most challenging uh, thermography applications. Uh, so just really quickly, I'll go over some of the, the main categories we produce. Uh, the first up is our full line of hyperspectral imaging systems called the HyperCam. Uh, so these systems uh, feature Fourier transform infrared imaging spectroscopy uh, with high spectral resolution. Uh, so this HyperCam produces a three-dimensional data product called a HyperCube or a data cube, uh, which contains a continuous infrared radiance signature for each individual pixel in our image. So, of course, this is an extremely rich data construct, and it's really well suited for remote sensing applications like gas detection, identification, and quantification. <clears throat> Uh, we've also got some multispectral systems, uh, which feature a fast rotating eight position filter wheel uh, that allows us to do time resolve multi-channel imaging. So this filter wheel spins at up to 6,000 RPMs, uh, which allows us to collect data, at, you know, a maximum frame rate of 800 Hertz, or we consider each individual channel 100 Hertz uh, per channel. Uh, we've got a line of high dynamic range cameras that are designed for uh, continuous measurements of wide temperature scenes up to 2500C. Uh, these cameras have an automated three position attenuation filter mechanism that uh, autonomously selects the most appropriate attenuation level and then rapidly switches that corresponding filter into place. So this allows for the continuous acquisition of data throughout a broad temperature range uh, without having to stop the measurement to you know, identify and switch to a neutral density filter. Uh, and then the last, uh, the last two here, we've got the fast series of camera uh, cameras, which are available in the short wave, mid wave, and long wave uh, configuration. As the name implies, these are designed for high speed data acquisition. Uh, we've got the fastest model, our uh, M3K, which is the fastest uh, commercial infrared imaging system on the market, maximum frame rate up to 120,000 frames per second. And then finally, over here on the right, we've got the spark line, uh, which includes high quality sort of general purpose thermography systems uh, with moderate high speed capabilities. Uh, we've got an overview here of some of the major markets we participate in, we participate in including you know, things like defense and security, industrial and university labs, uh, large national laboratories and institutes. So you know, our products are used in a wide variety of applications and measurements. So you know, again, if you're interested in pursuing infrared imaging technology, uh, please get in touch with us and we can discuss your, uh, your application needs. Okay, so now with all of that introductory material out of the way, let's take a quick look at the agenda for uh, the presentation today. So the first section of this talk is going to be a review of the basic concepts and terms that we associate with spatial resolution, you know, just to make sure everyone is on the same page. Uh, we'll also highlight some, uh, some basic system design considerations that we need to be aware of. You know, whether we're specifying a new system or evaluating the spatial resolution capabilities of an existing system. <clears throat> uh, next, we'll get into some of the advantages that are brought about uh, from a high resolution system. Uh, the easiest and most impactful way to me uh, to do this is to take a look at some comparisons between low resolution and high resolution images of the same target. Uh, we'll also touch on what we can do to optimize our imaging system for the extreme cases. Uh, things like long-range measurements of a large and distant target or close-up measurements of targets with millimeter or micron scale features. <clears throat> um, to sort of bring this discussion out of the, uh, the virtual classroom, the webinar classroom, and into the real world, uh, we'll also take a look at some of the specs and unique features of uh, some of the state-of-the-art high spatial resolution systems we make, which are called the Telops Fast HD and SHD models. And just to sort of show off a little bit about what these kinds of systems can do, we'll wrap, I, uh, we'll wrap up by doing a, a brief survey of some of the common applications with high spatial resolution requirement. Um, things like military signature and ranging, additive manufacturing, uh, microelectronics inspection, just to sort of name a few here. 
Uh, so again, just to kind of reiterate, please feel free to use this go to webinar question box function uh, if anything comes up during the few, uh, during the presentation. I'll reserve a couple minutes at the end here to answer a few, but uh, like Sylvain said, if you stump me and I don't read your question live here, I'll be sure to uh, provide you with a well-researched answer in our follow-up email. All right, so hopefully everyone's still with me here. Um, we'll start off by reviewing some of the basic concepts and definitions. Uh, so we've all got you know, a good baseline for the rest of the talk. So when we talk about spatial resolution uh, in the context of an imaging system, what we are really referring to is the ability of that system to accurately capture the fine details of a target or scene. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, in order to generate uh, an accurate image, radiation from the target must illuminate a minimum number of pixels. <clears throat> um, this minimum number of pixels is going to be highly dependent on, you know, what are the goals of that measurement? Which is why, in my opinion, the spatial resolution requirements of the application can and should drive the configuration of the imaging system itself. So, you know, we've got many measurements of spatial resolution, but for our purposes here today, we're going to primarily refer to uh, those measurements that are listed in this figure here uh, on the right. Uh, so the important aspects of spatial resolution for a thermal imaging system include total system field of view, uh, the individual pixel instantaneous field of view and the pixel pitch or the pixel size <clears throat> excuse me um, so total field of view the total field of view of the camera specifies uh, the extent of the total observable world that can be captured uh, with a single measurement so total field of view is often expressed by the detector format uh, which represents the number of pixels available in the horizontal and vertical dimensions uh, we also have the instantaneous field of view, sometimes called the IFOV, uh, which refers to the solid angle uh, through which a single detector pixel is sensitive to electromagnetic radiation. And, you know, I always think about this as the size of the area that each individual pixel sees. <clears throat> so those physical dimensions that correspond to the IFOV and the TFOV, uh, these can be modified through the use of different four optics, such as lenses, telescopes, uh, to ensure that the number of pixels on our object is always maximized and we're sort of maximizing the quality of our collected image. So finally here, we've got pixel pitch. Uh, pixel pitch refers to the center to center distance uh, between adjacent pixels uh, and is directly related to the ability of the camera to resolve fine detail uh, within that recorded image. Um, a detector with a small pixel pitch uh, we'll be able to get more pixels on a given target than a larger pixel pitch detector, detector, again, leading to a more accurate representation of the sort of fine details and structure of that target object. So we want to make a camera with high spatial resolution. You know, where do we start? First thing we want to do, we want to consider our detector, right? So the detector array size, the detector format, these are going to be fundamental to the total field of view we can achieve. And of course, you know, larger really is better here, right? A larger array size is going to give us a wider total field of view than a smaller array. Um, the pixel pitch of our detector is also important to consider. Uh, remember, the pitch tells us about the size of the pixels, the center to center distance between adjacent pixels. And, you know, you know, with all else being equal, a detector with a smaller pixel pitch is going to be able to get more targets and more pixels on that target, generate a higher quality image than a detector with a larger pixel pitch. So, you know, the detector is crucial, of course, in determining our resolution capabilities, but it's not the whole story. Uh, we've also got our four optics, our lenses, telescopes, microscopes. Um, which again, these function to essentially modify the physical dimensions that correspond with those fundamental measures, the total and instantaneous field of view that are determined by our detector, right? So, you know, we could do an entire webinar on how to choose the correct lens for your measurement, what are the trade-offs associated with those different choices, things like that. But at the end of the day, we're concerned with generating a high quality image, again, by maximizing the number of pixels on our target. Most cases, this means that we want to optimize our lens for our measurement. Uh, we do this by choosing a focal length that both considers the target distance and maximizes the view of the target on the detector. 
All right, so you know, I think we've defined spatial resolution pretty well, took a look at some of the design considerations for you know, high resolution imaging system. What advantages does this capability bring to me, right? I think the easiest way to sort of illustrate these advantages are by taking a look at some photos that we captured with imaging systems at different resolutions. <clears throat> so here on this slide, we have a very typical fire experiment a uh, fire science experiment where we perform a controlled burn. Uh, it's basically a small wooden pallet that they call a crib, right? Um, so we had two cameras set up side by side here, the high resolution Telops Fast M3 SHD. And you can see underneath, we've got uh, the large array and the small pixel pitch. And then we've also used the Telops Fast M3K, uh, which has a smaller array and a larger pixel pitch. So first advantage to the high resolution system, of course, we have a much wider total field of view. Um, so these images on the left, or, or you know, these images were acquired from a similar distance and using lenses with the same focal length. But the smaller array size of the fast M3K on the bottom uh, leads, leads us to a smaller overall field of view than we have with the SHD on the top. Um, something else that's interesting, if we look at these images on the right, uh, these were digitally zoomed uh, to the same magnification factor to illustrate uh, sort of the decreased pixelization or pixelation that is present in sort of the high resolution resolution SHD images uh, compared to the low resolution M3K images. So there's obviously quite a bit more pixelation at the same magnification level in the larger pixel pitch um, M3K. So this increased performance in digital zoom uh, for a high resolution system, it, it offers the potential for reducing the complexity and the performance requirements of the four optics, the lenses, microscope, telescope, whatever, reduces those performance requirements while you know, maintaining the sort of adequate image quality performance that might be required for the task at hand. So you know, this digital image uh, zoom performance really could end up simplifying the system reducing cost, reducing complexity of uh, the four optics collection, collection system, excuse me. <clears throat> All right, so let's take a look at some common types of measurements. Uh, we can see how the conditions uh, will drive the configuration of an imaging system. So long range measurements this is a pretty common example of sort of a, uh, you know, a high, a high capability measurement. Um, long, range, long range measurements of small targets are going to require large format detectors, small pixel pitch and combination. And then also we're going to need to use a long focal length lens in order to decrease the single pixel instantaneous field of view. And again, ensure that we have adequate pixel coverage of our distant target. So there's a trade-off associated with uh, the increased magnification that's achieved by a long focal length lens. And that trade-off is a decrease in the total, uh, I'm sorry, a decrease in the total field of view and a reduced depth of field. So a reduction in depth of field basically manifests as uh, essentially a smaller depth volume in which objects can be focused. So for long range measurements, this might not typically be a concern since we're primarily interested in uh, the signature of the target object and, you know, background details are less important. Um, we can reduce the aperture size, uh, which can help by increasing the depth of field. But again, we have another trade-off with reduced light, reduced light collection uh, from that smaller aperture, which will require things like a higher exposure time and limit the, uh, the maximum frame rate that we can acquire data at. So similarly, uh, we'll switch focus to a close range measurement of a very small target, uh, see how this impacts our system configuration. System configuration. Excuse me. Um, this is actually quite similar to, uh, to a long range measurement, but um, again, we're gonna be served well by utilizing a large format detector, small pixel pitch, um, to adequately capture the fine structure and details of our object. Um, so in contrast to these long focal length lenses required for long range measurements, uh, these close range or even microscope measurements are going to be uh, best served by using a close up lens like a macro lens or, or a microscope system. <clears throat> uh, utilizing a microscope or a macro lens will have a similar effect to that long focal length lens. We're gonna decrease our field of view and the depth of field, uh, which remembers the size of the volume over which we can uh, focus uh, our system. 
But what we gain here, the microscope lens, is object magnification or a decrease in the pixel instantaneous field of view. So this allows us to capture fine spatial details uh, on the order of two and a half microns if we use a 4x microscope with our SHD camera. So, you know, the important takeaway here is that no matter if we're pursuing a long range or a close range measurement, we need to optimize the detector array size and pixel pitch uh, to make sure that we're capturing high quality image imagery with, you know, accurate uh, reproduction of fine detail. All right, so hopefully I've convinced you that, uh, you know, we can get a lot of advantage from a high spatial resolution system, uh, a large array with a small pixel size. Um, uh, but, you know, we're very happy to introduce uh, some new high definition and super high definition uh, thermal imaging systems to our scientific product line. And this slide kind of shows the main specs for, uh, for those cameras. So first up, we have the HD series. We've got 1280 by 1024 INSB array, 10 micron pixel. And this is sensitive over what we call the extended mid-wave spectral range from 1.5 to 5.4 microns. <clears throat> we have two different models in this HD series, M100 HD and M200 HD. Um, these models are differentiated by their frame rate capabilities with the 100 HD capable of full frame at 100 hertz and the uh, 200 HD capable of full frame at 180 hertz. Of course, you know, this doesn't sound like much when we consider the thousand hertz full frame rate capability, uh, you know, of a camera that's optimized for these kinds of high speed acquisitions like the Fast M3K. But the HD series, we can utilize a smaller sub window to push those frame rate capabilities even higher. So to me, this makes the HD a really versatile tool for applications that, you know, you want some high spatial resolution, you want to be able to get a really nice image, but you still want to be able to acquire data with some moderate temporal resolution. Uh, so in addition to that HD series, we also have the super high definition or SHD series. <clears throat> so SHD both feature INSB array detectors with 10 micron pixel pitch, but our two models are distinguished by the detector format. The M2 SHD has a 1520 by 1536 array and can go uh, acquire at 50 hertz in the full frame. And for those measurements with the most sort of extreme resolution requirements, we have the M3 SHD, which has a massive 1920 by 1536 pixel, pixel array and is capable of acquiring data at the full frame at 90 frames per second. So again, like the HD series, this, is, this SHD series is uh, optimized for extremely high spatial resolution performance, but we still have some sort of moderate frame rate capabilities to adequately capture uh, quickly evolving scenes. So in addition to the high quality imagery that's afforded by this large format, small pixel detector, uh, the fast HD and SHD feature, you know, all of the advanced capabilities that make Telops cameras unique. So the first and most important feature to mention is the Telops real-time temperature calibration. So all of the cameras uh, that Telops produces come delivered from the factory with a high accuracy, permanent radiometric calibration that doesn't ever require the user to recalibrate with a black body reference source. Um, Talops calibration is a true pixel wise calibration and includes a non-uniformity correction step for improved photo response uniformity. And then we create a dense lookup table that relates the camera response to a desired radiometric quantity. So, you know, our calibration method allows the user to view images in uncalibrated modes like raw or nuke or to display the data in the calibrated units of radiometric temperature, in-band radiance, and even in-band irradiance. Um, so our calibration fully compensates for the self-emission of all components in the optical path, including any filters or lenses uh, chosen by the user. Um, perhaps most importantly of all, the Telops calibration remains valid over any combination of parameters supported by the, by the camera which means that the user can change things like the measurement window size and the exposure time without the need for recalibration. <clears throat> so if you're a seasoned user of infrared cameras, you know that recalibration is often required when changing exposure time, window size, even the operating environment. 
Um, as you can imagine, all this recalibration can take up a lot of overhead in your experimental design. It takes a lot of time for these black bodies to, you know, ramp up and down and settle at the correct temperature. So you do end up losing a lot of time to, uh, to doing these sort of repeated recalibrations. Uh, the Telops factory calibration completely eliminates the need for this, this periodic recalibration effort, allows the user to freely change exposure time and other parameters uh, gives you, you know, significant gains in experimental efficiency. <clears throat> of course, calibration is only as good as its accuracy, and the telop cal telops calibration delivers with uh, with high accuracy. Our specification is shown here on the bottom. Uh, we guarantee radiometric accuracy of plus minus two percent up to 2500C, and we can often even get around plus minus one percent at lower temperatures. So one of the benefits of being able to freely change the exposure time uh, without impacting the calibration is that we're able to implement some pretty interesting advanced features. So one of these features is called automatic exposure control. And this is an operating mode where the camera is essentially able to read the radiance coming from the scene and autonomously adjust the exposure time to respect user chosen image fraction and well filling parameters. Um, the AEC parameters can be tuned to, you know, completely eliminate saturation from an evolving image or to sort of accept a chosen level of, sap of saturation and optimize the exposure time for cooler portions of the scene. So, you know, this can be really useful to um, maximize performance over a continuously evolving experiment, or it can even be used for sort of a general purpose method development and sort of finding the ideal exposure time for, for a given measurement. So um, this video here shows the AEC in action. Uh, this is going to be a measurement of a cartridge casing being ejected from a semi-automatic rifle. Before I start, I want to call your attention first over here. Hopefully you can see my mouse, but on the right-hand side of the Reveal IR screen, we've got an exposure time box um, that's going to monitor the exposure time as the experiment progresses. So as we start here, I'll have you note that we start at an exposure time of 144 microseconds. And then um, as this uh, casing gets ejected, we can see that the exposure time decreases down to, I don't know, approximately six to eight microseconds, I thought I saw. Um, and it does that in order to maintain a user-specified well-filling and image fraction parameter. So again, this, this automatic exposure control operating mode is unique to Telops, and it's made possible by our calibration which allows us, for, uh, allows us to adjust the exposure time without impacting the radiometric performance. So the next advanced feature uh, is called enhanced high dynamic range imaging, uh, which is similar to a technique called super framing uh, that you may be familiar with if you've been around the, uh, the IR camera business for a while. Um, in some experiments, you know, we might be interested in a scene that's exhibiting high thermal contrast where if we use the single exposure time, we might get some saturation on one part, one part of one hotter part of the image, and we might get low signal strength in a different cooler part of the image, right? So with the HDRI mode, it allows the user to specify up to four individual exposure times uh, to be used sequentially during an acquisition, uh, along with the ability to set the occurrence of each of those individual exposure times. Uh, so within Telops Reveal IR control software, uh, the user can view uh, the image stream associated with the individual exposure times and even merge those images to form a composite uh, with an improved dynamic range compared to any of the individual exposure time images. <clears throat> Again, we want to use EHDRI on a very contrasted scene, uh, an example of which you can see in the top left of the slide here. Um, so this is an EHDRI acquisition of a soldering iron. Uh, where you can see the images associated with the four individual exposure times uh, on the left and middle columns there, and then uh, the high dynamic range composite image on the right. So you'll notice that if all of these individual exposure time images, uh, we exhibit either underexposure or saturation, right? But the composite image, we, we merge these images together, this composite image doesn't show either. Right. So like we mentioned, uh, this can be a really nice way to deal with highly contrasted scenes. And again, it's the Telops calibration that allows us to implement this feature. All right. Specifications, calibrations, features, it's all really nice to talk about. Right. But 
what application areas are best served by high resolution systems. Um, you know, of course, any application can benefit from increased spatial resolution, right? But uh, the next couple slides, I'm going to highlight a few examples that we think are, you know, particularly well suited for uh, for these high uh, spatial resolution measurements. So uh, the first application up here is military signature and ranging. So the goal here is to characterize the infrared signature uh, of a target against a wide variety of backgrounds and under a wide variety of environmental and operational conditions. Um, you know, as you would imagine, a major focus of these measurements is the acquisition of the infrared signature of land, air, and sea craft, as you can see here in these images on the bottom. Um, you know, we've got additional targets of interest for signature measurements, things like active and passive signature suppression systems, flare decoys, smoke candles, camouflage, even the muzzle flash from a variety of small and large arms. Um, you know, in all of these cases, spatial resolution is going to be paramount to, you know, ensuring that we get an accurate and detailed representation of the infrared signature of that target that we're looking at. Uh, as we saw earlier in this presentation, the HD and SHD models can be configured for optimal performance at both short and long, dis long measurement distances, which is you know, crucial for a demanding application like signature measurement. <clears throat> um, high resolution thermal imaging can also find great utility in fire science. Uh, things like fire protection engineering, like we saw earlier in the presentation, and wildfire research, like you can see here on this slide. Um, so this example was given by our friends at the University of Canterbury in New Zealand. Um, this group is interested in documenting the propagation of wildfires. And the videos here show the propagation of an active flame front. So in this top video, the fire is moving sort of from the bottom left to the top right uh, of the scene. And we can see that there's really you know, quite a bit of spatial variation in both the fire propagation front and the rising flames uh, from the leading edge. Uh, again, high spatial resolution systems are going to allow us to put more pixels on the target, capture a more realistic and representative image of our scene. Um, the bottom video is kind of interesting also. Uh, this shows the evolution of the temperature profile of that fire along this line AB that you see here in the video uh, as that flame front is propagating. Uh, the important features here are sort of the sustained periodicity that you're seeing of the flaming zone and the apparent movement of hot air parcels uh, towards the fire front. So again, spatial resolution is going to be crucial to, to documenting this behavior uh, in an accurate and detailed way. So, you know, large scale targets like military vehicles and wildfires are, are of course, uh, we're able to analyze those, but, uh, you know, these high resolution systems are also really well suited for um, inspections of small parts, things like the circuit, uh, the printed circuit board that you see in this image. <clears throat> um, so the HD and SHD models are fully compatible with Telops fixed working distance uh, 4X microscope optic uh, to achieve high quality imagery of targets with dimensions on the order of millimeters or even micrometers. Um, in this particular example, the images we see here were acquired with a previous generation HD camera uh, that had a 15 micron pixel pitch in the detector. So when we couple this camera to the 4X microscope lens, we get a pixel instantaneous field of view of 3.75 microns, very small, right? Um, with our new HD and SHD models with a 10 micron pitch, the spatial resolution gets reduced even further, whereas now each pixel is going to be covering a distance of 2.5 microns. So, you know, this is, of course, extremely small spatial resolution, allows us to maximize the pixels on the target, reveal these sort of uh, these fine details here. Um, this microscopy capability is really well suited for a variety of applications, uh, but focusing on circuit board inspections, we can do things like compare the thermal behavior of components in both powered and unpowered states, monitor the thermal gradients across the PCB to see if we need to think about, you know, additional thermal management strategies, and even monitor for defects by, uh, by visualizing the presence of hotspots. Just as another example of the microscopy capability of these systems, 
here we have the same sort of previous gen HD camera and 4X lens, uh, this time acquiring images of, uh, this is the fingerprint sensor uh, of an iPhone. Um, if we take a look at the thermal image on the right, uh, you can see that the pixels of the fingerprint scanner uh, sensor are, you know, on the order of 50 microns. Um, so given what we know about the spatial resolution we can achieve with this 15 micron pixel pitch, uh, and also with our new 10 micron pixel pitch systems, um, we can calculate that, you know, with the previous generation of HD cameras, we can put 14 image pixels on that target. And with those new fast HD cameras with the 10 micron pixel pitch, we can increase that to 20 pixels on that same target. So again, more pixels on the target, better image, more accurate representation of the details, um, you know, which I hope has clearly been illustrated uh, throughout this presentation here. So finally, we come to the end of the presentation here and some of the key things that I hope you'll take away from, from our webinar here. Um, first of all, we reviewed some of the basic concepts surrounding spatial resolution, uh, which we can define as the ability of an imaging system to accurately capture fine detail uh, in an image. <clears throat> uh, we also discussed how the configuration of that imaging system can impact its spatial resolution performance uh, with systems featuring large format detector detectors with small pixel pitch, exhibiting very strong spatial resolution performance. Uh, we also introduced why spatial resolution is important beyond, you know, sort of the bigger is always better reflex we might have. Um, we talked about how increased spatial resolution offers imagery with superior image detail and clarity, and that these characteristics may allow for a simplified four optic design due to improved optical zoom performance. Uh, we also discussed the implications of increased resolution for both long range and close up measurement systems. Uh, we introduced the fast HD and SHD models, which again are large format detectors with 10 micron pixel pitch, specifically optimized for high spatial resolution measurements. And then finally, uh, we did a very brief and very high level overview of a few examples of applications finding value in increased resolution, including military signature and ranging, fire science, and microelectronics inspection. Uh, you know, we could talk all day about these different applications. So uh, again, I encourage you to reach out to me if you want to continue this conversation uh, about your specific measurement. <clears throat> so finally here at the end, we have some contact information for Telops. I want to encourage you to visit our website. There's a lot of really great technical content on there, uh, sort of illustrates the breadth of experience that we have. Um, I'm gonna now turn to the question box, see if anything has come in during the presentation. And I guess while I do that, I will put this slide up um, showing our excellent business development team, some of whom I think might be in the audience right now. Uh, these guys are really great to work with. They have a real talent for helping you find the solution that's gonna best fit your needs. So, you know, again, please don't hesitate to reach out to any of us. All right, let's take a look at the questions. Thank you, Ben, for this uh, presentation. Uh, I think we have time to answer probably one or two questions live on air. Um, so uh, can you pick up one? Yes, uh, actually we didn't have any questions that came in during the presentation. Um, um, so yeah, if anyone's got any out there right now, feel free to type into this box uh, down here on the right. Um, happy to sort of chat about your individual uh, measurements, any questions that you might have. Of course, I know everything was perfectly clear and understandable from my, from my presentation, so um, yeah. Well, I mean, I guess if there's, if there's nothing that's coming in right now, um, again, I'd like to uh, emphasize that you can reach out to any of us if you wanna continue this conversation. Um, uh, we'll spot send a follow-up email with all of these slides, so you'll have that as well, plus a link to uh, the recording of the webinar. So, um, yeah, I think that's it. Thank you very much, everyone, for your time and attention, and look out for the next webinar from Telops. Thanks. Thanks for watching.